This lesson is over chapter 12.3, Introduction to Polynomials. And I want to tell you that a polynomial is a finite sum of terms in the form of a x to the nth power. For example, this right here is a polynomial. Poly means many. Okay. And nomial refers to this right here. So the first term we have 7x to the fifth power. So the number that's in front of the variable is a 7 as a coefficient. The next term is 8x to the fourth. Now we do have a negative. So the number in front of the variable is negative 8. The next term in the polynomial is x squared. And you notice we don't have a number here, but it's understood as 1. The next term is negative 3x. And we have the variable, which is x. And you notice that it's in descending order, 5, 4, 2, 1. And our coefficient is negative 3. And then the last, the last term is 5, which is a constant. This is your constant, and the coefficient is 5. In example 2, there is a way to uh, to give the different characteristics of polynomial. For example, a monomial has exactly one term. A binomial has exactly two terms. And a trinomial has exactly three terms. So we have monomial, binomial, and trinomial. The degree will be the highest exponent in this polynomial. So the degree is the highest exponent in the polynomial. So for example, we have 12x to the fourth minus 7x, and it is a 1. It's understood as 1, but they don't put a 1 there, plus 3. So we have 1, 2, 3 terms. So this is considered to be a trinomial. And the degree is equal to 4. So just to summarize this, this section, there is a way we can classify polynomials given, to, given by the amount of terms. One term is a monomial, two terms is a binomial, and three terms is a trinomial. Anything more than a, tri a trinomial, anything more than three terms is considered to be a polynomial. Okay. The table above shows you how we can classify polynomials based on the number of terms. As we said before, a monomial has one term, a binomial has two terms, a trinomial has three terms, and this is more than three terms. And you can see that each polynomial has the amount as indicated, monomials, binomials, and trinomials. For example three, it says find the degree of each polynomial and tell whether the polynomial is a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of these. If you look at A, we have one, two, three three terms, so it would be classified as a trinomial.
and the degree will be the highest exponent. In this case, it's 2. The next polynomial is 15x minus 10. Since there's two terms, we're going to classify this as a binomial. And the degree is equal to 1. Remember, it's understood as that is a race, x raised to the power 1. Example C, we're going to have to do some rearranging since it's not in the correct form. Remember, we said that we want the exponent to be descending. So we notice that we have 3x to the third plus 2x squared plus 7x minus 1. So we had to rearrange the polynomial in exponents in descending order. Now we have 4, so it's not going to be, it's neither a monomial, binomial, trinomial. So we would say it's none of these. But it does have a degree of 3. For example, 4, we have to sub substitute x equal negative 2 into the polynomial. So we have negative 5 times two, negative 2 plus 6. So you're going to have to substitute x equal negative 2 into the polynomial. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive. 10 plus 6 is 16. So now we're going to have to substitute into each x in the polynomial negative 2. So we have 3 times negative 2 to the second power minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 to the second power is 4 times 3. And then a negative times a negative is positive 4 plus 1. So we have 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 4, which is 16, plus 1, 17. For C, we have to substitute into x negative 2. So we have 6 times negative 2 squared plus 11 times negative 2 minus 20. So we have 6 times 4 plus 11 times negative 2 gives you negative 22 minus 20. And you notice that 6 times 4 is 24 minus 22, minus 20. And 24 minus 22 gives us 2. 2 minus 20 gives us negative 18. So for these type of problems, all you have to do is substitute x equal negative 2. For example 6, what we're doing here is we're, we're simplifying each polynomial. We're going to combine that uh, the terms that are alike. For example, we have negative 3 plus 7. And we're going to follow the same rules as we did in adding and subtracting real numbers. So we're going to subtract the 2 and keep the sign of the larger so it's going to be 4x. Now, for b, we have 11x squared plus 5 plus 2x squared minus 7. We're not just going to add all, all the terms. We're going to add the ones that are alike. And these two are alike. So we have 11x squared plus 2x squared, which gives us 13x squared. And what you're doing here is you're adding the coefficients. These are the coefficients. Now you notice we have 5 and we have a minus 7. So 5 minus 7 gives you negative 2. For example, C, we have 9x cubed, and it's understood here as 1x cubed. And just like I said earlier, these terms are alike. So we know that we're going to have x cubed. Now the question is, what's the coefficient? We have 9 plus 1 
which gives us 10. So that will be our simplified version of that polynomial. For D, we have 5x squared plus 6x minus 9x minus 3. The terms that are alike are actually 6x and negative 9x. The other two don't have any other terms that are alike, so we're just going to write them down. So we have 5x squared, 6x minus 9x. We follow the rules for adding and subtracting real numbers. So we're going to subtract. We get 3x. Keep the sign of the larger, so it's negative 3x minus 3. For E, we have 3 times xy minus 5y squared plus 7 times yx. Now you notice these are out of order here, but they're actually the same term. So we're going to add the coefficients. So we have 10xy. Now these are different, so I'm just going to write them as minus 5y squared minus 9x squared. Normally, we usually have uh, the term with the highest exponent come first. So this would be negative 5y squared plus 10xy minus 9x squared. At the beginning of the lesson, I told you that a polynomial has what we call descending powers. Uh, there are some polynomials that are missing those powers, uh, exponents. For example, we have x squared. The next one would be x, but we don't have it, so we're going to write 0x minus 4. You notice you write a 0 for the coefficient. For c, it's out of order, and we're missing some terms. So we have x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 2x. We're going to add the following polynomial, and it's going to follow the same rules as adding and subtracting integers. I'm going to do this vertically, so I have 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x plus 7. So if you notice on the second polynomial, I have 5x squared minus 2x. And this is how you set it up to add the polynomials vertically. And now, since we don't have a x cubed here, I'm just going to write 4x cubed. Here, we have to follow the uh, rules for integers. So negative 6 plus 5 gives you negative x squared. 2x minus 2x is 0, so what you're left with is plus 7. For number 2, I'm going to use the vertical method, so I'm going to go ahead and write negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 1, and then I have negative 2x squared plus x plus 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these. A common mistake that students have here is they say this is 0, but this is actually negative 4x squared. And then we have 5x plus x, which gives us plus 6x. Now this is difference of, uh, difference of, of numbers here. 
So we have 3 minus 1, which gives you plus 2. For example 3, we have 7y cubed minus 2y squared plus 7. And then we have 6y squared plus 1. So I'm going to add. So I have 7y cubed. The next one has uh, different integers. It's a negative and a positive, so this will be positive 4y squared. And then 7 plus 1 gives you plus 8. Before we subtract these polynomials, uh, you need to take into account that you have a negative there, a minus. I like to use the distributive property. Negative one times two x, so I'm gonna write five x minus three, plus negative two x, and then a negative times a negative is positive 11, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and line them up. So I have five x, minus 3 plus negative 2x plus 11. Kind of helps on adding and subtracting the polynomials. So 5x minus 2x gives you 3x. And you notice there's a difference of signs. So we have 11 minus 3, which is 8, and it's going to be positive 8. So let's go ahead and do example 5. Number five, we have 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 6x. Remember to treat this as negative 1. So you have negative 1 times 2x cubed, so it's negative 2x cubed. A negative 1 times a negative x squared gives you a positive x squared. And the negative 1 times 1 gives you a minus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and add these together doing the vertical so you have method so you have 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 6x minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0. 8x squared plus x squared gives you 9x squared. These are different terms, so it's minus 6x minus 1. For example, 6. We have 5y squared plus 2y minus 6. We have a negative times a negative. It gives you a positive 3y squared. A negative times a negative gives you a positive 2y. A negative times 11 gives you a negative 11. So you have 5y squared plus 2y minus 6. And then we have 3y squared plus 2y minus 11. So 3y squared plus 5y squared gives you 8y squared. 2y plus 2y gives you 4y. And negative 6 minus 11 gives you negative 17.